How you doing, fam-bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and I'm excited today because we will do a AMD Ryzen 7000 series build. It is finally here. It is AMD's Ryzen 7950X. We will install this processor. Some of the components that I will build this PC with, you may be familiar with already. I will use Corsair's IQ 5000X mid-tower case. I do love the design of the case. It is full glass and it does have plenty of airflow in this case. It's very similar to the 12900K case because I want to get as close as possible when it comes to benchmarking temperatures in those type of areas. Now this case is large enough to fit a NVIDIA RTX 4090. Currently you can purchase a case just like this. Corsair's IQ 5000X down in the description box down below with 5% off for under $200. So this is a case I definitely do recommend. I believe the graphic card that you can fit up into here is up to 419 millimeters. If you do choose to get an RTX 4090, you don't have to worry. It should fit in a case just like this. If it doesn't, then I'd be a little bit worried. I'd be more worried about the RTX 5000 series because that would be questionable. Is full glass, full panel, and it does get plenty of airflow through here, through the vents. You fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator up here on the front. You could also fit a 360 millimeter radiator up top. So I'm gonna just take the case all apart because I'd like to have access to everything when we do this build. So we're gonna make sure everything's open and it's gonna make it a lot less heavy for you. Also, I do like to ca carry coffee filters. And the reason why is because when we do install this AIO that we will have on this PC, it will also help wipe off the thermal paste. It's very easy for it to come apart. Another feature that I do like on this case, if you turn it to the side here, it does have a door panel. You just take off the tape here and you can actually unhinge the door panel just like that to keep to have easy access. Uh, you can fit up to three 120 millimeter fans right here, which we will do. We will take that apart eventually. But first, I like to take off all the glass first and remove all the filters. I'm gonna keep Corsair's fans up here in place. It comes with a lighting node pro here, up here in the back, and a fan controller. So you can hook up to three extra ports here, and same thing with the lighting node. So you don't even have to hook up another extra lighting node if you don't want to. We obviously don't need this metal case here, so we're gonna take this out too. There it is. This is all optional equipment to put onto it. If you want, this is for cable routing. And then you do got, it's a SSD space here. And if you take this out, this will have extra screws, anything that you need in order to install. They'll usually have the extra Velcro and all that good stuff in here. Well, so just in case if you dropped anything, you could always access it. But what I usually like to do is I'll put some of the screws back. Just put it in just enough to where it has two or three threads on it. Just like how I set it up, now I'm mostly all clear. So what I plan to do is I'm gonna put the radiator up here on the top and I'm just gonna put the fans right here on the side for the push setup and the pull setup will be up on the top. Another thing that I do plan on doing, I do want to get another graphics card. This graphics card that's actually gonna be in here is gonna be temporary. But I will explain as we go on and the very reason why it's gonna be temporary and it'll make sense later. I got about 10 million pieces already as it is up here on the table. So 
The next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna take a look at the motherboard that I did get for this processor. Ah. We got Asus's ROG Crosshair X670E Hero. This is a ATX Fitment motherboard. You don't have to worry about it being an EATX. It will fit right in. And you're probably thinking, why did I pick Asus again? I'll tell you right now, I'm not completely biased on Asus, but I can say this. It has more of the features that I am looking for, especially in the newer motherboard. If you saw earlier on one of my videos, I originally wanted to build on Gigabyte's X670E Aorus Extreme and it was a really attractive motherboard. And if you wanna see the reason why, I do have the card right above or the description box right down below if you wanna see the reason why. I also did compare MSI's X670E Meg Ace. I felt like MSI cheapened their motherboard for what should be offered on it. And this will also help accuracy when it comes to benchmarking and it'll make sense against 12900K because I do have an ASUS Z690 motherboard. So I will compare it up against these X670E. Why not? Why not both of them compete because they're as close as it can be when it'll come down to benchmarking. For those who dare, this is a LGA 1718 socket motherboard. So the difference between this and AMD's older motherboards, their older chipsets, such as the B570, is that it actually has pins inside of this connector, this plastic cover for its CPU. Now, it does also feature PCI Express 5.0 X16 on both sides. It does feature two PCI Express 5.0 NVMEs, so it does at X4, so it has two of those. And it will also come with an addition if you have extra storage of PCI Express 5.0 and VME. Remember, if you do install that, that will reduce your lane down to X8 because both lanes will be occupied then. Another feature that was really attractive to me was that it does feature USB 4.0 Gen 3. That's really important to know because the reason why you're looking for Gen 3 is that USB, just regular USB 4.0, and you don't see any gen next to it, is a glorified version of USB 3.2 generation two. You wanna look for USB 4.0 gen three specifically, and this motherboard has two of them. All the other motherboards at this same price range does not have USB 4.0 gen three. So that was another attraction to me. For example, gigabytes, you have to purchase they do, they will have it. It's just that it's not on the motherboard yet, but you can purchase the additional card if you want that. Ever since that Z690 debacle that happened, I always check these memory chips because now I'm always concerned if they're, if the polarity will be backwards. So oh, it's a good idea just to check it just in case because I had to end up RMA in mines. And if you didn't see that, you can check that also in the description box down below. We have it out and ready. I got it sitting on top of the anti-static bag. And now we're gonna get ready to put the processor in. Next, we'll put this to the side. We're gonna open up this AMD processor here. And it's gonna look completely different from the 5000 series because these processors no longer have pins anymore. Look at that presentation that it has of its marvelous display. So it just kind of folds open just like that. You have a nice AMD sticker you can put onto your case. And on the back of it, you can see there is no more pins anymore. There it is right here. And here's the back of it. And pay attention to the arrow because that's gonna be important when we install this processor into the case. But I do gotta say one thing. It's very interesting about these heat spreaders because it looks like thermal paste could easily go into it. So make sure you don't put way too much thermal paste because it could easily fall into the process aside from what it looks like. So please be careful. You gotta make sure to follow the arrow here. Just like we mentioned, it's gonna be on the top left hand side. So first thing you gotta do is you're gonna lift up the latch here, push down, lift, kind of just like you're doing at Intel. 
And there are the beautiful pins right there, as you can see. There. Now, you want to make sure it's sitting flush. You want to kind of push down this angle right here. It comes right out. We'll move this to the side here and take out this cooler. I got the H150i Elite LCD 360 uh, millimeter radiator here. That's the radiator and the actual heat sink for this piece. Corsair's ML fans that do come with it. AMD, that's what we're gonna be looking for here. You get your AM4 screws and you just, they're just gonna be standoffs, just like that. Make sure they're all nice and hand tight. And we won't install the heatsink till afterwards. But next thing we're gonna put the NVMe in. I don't want to put anything up here because this is obviously going to be for a PCI Express 5.0 NVMe as how large that heat sink is. We're going to install it on this side since this is going to be NVMe 5.0 here. Make sure you remember to remove this sticker on the back here because that's going to be pretty important to do. You'll go towards the motherboard as it'll kind of make a half gray circle. That's how you know it's on there correctly. And next, we're gonna put the RAM in. What I got here was Corsair's RAM right here. I wanna keep these latches open on this side here. The 6200 RAM right here. Now it's ready to install into the case. All motherboards are usually set up with ATX. They usually have nine mounting holes here, as you can see. And the screws typically come into the bag or the box of the Corsair items. Usually the motherboard screws will look something like this here. And you can always double check before you put the motherboard in and you'll know if it's in properly and it should feel right. And it'll just kind of pop into place when you know you have it sitting right, and it did. I like to put the power cables up here for the CPU first. Of course, Sarah certainly went cheaper on the packaging now. They don't even give you a baggie anymore when it comes to power supplies. I'll put it in now, because it'll get in the way if install a radiator and power supplies they typically won't let you mix it up and wow got a couple of dents looks like but the hoses for the always go onto the right side that's how you know you have it in the correct direction but before we do that we're gonna put this radiator on first what I personally like to do is I like to hand start these. You don't want to immediately start drilling these in. We want to make sure it's on the pull side. This is for pull and push. There's always some sort of pro and con when it comes to this. Also, don't forget the washers when you do install the radiator. Just to get that screw in, I had to lift it out, so. Make sure you tighten these down. Don't grab the fence. You might want to use a screwdriver for this because these are rubber mounts. You want to make sure it don't sink too far. I like to get a brand new rag here, and this is just microfiber. Make sure it's clean. Tiny bit of alcohol here. And now you can just wipe it off. And most importantly, we gotta clean this off now. Remember to have some thermal compound. That's very important. Personally, I like to use 
Arctic Silver 5. I've been using this stuff for as long as I've done builds. You get something like coffee filters and pour some alcohol on them because you want to get at least most of this gunk off. Get another new nice clean coffee filter here. All you really need is like two of them to get it really cleaned off. Wipe it with the microfiber cloth. And these plates got to be changed out. The right side right here and the left side up here on the top. I'm just going to simply install it just like this. Get the thermal paste. Make sure it's only a pea size. Do a star pattern when you tighten this. And now we can set this on here. So we have that plugged in. Now I'm just gonna put the Commander Node Pro on here. Make sure to separate everything well here. Personally, I like to use the magnetic stuff instead. I don't really like to use the 3M. We'll stick to metal anyway and you might want to change your mind and move it eventually so this B could go here because it uses two USBs we can turn it into one here and because I have both of the lighting nodes here they both will require SATA power so might as well keep that one to the side Next, we want to line up all the fans that we just hooked up and figure out where to place them. So we got the first, second, and third fan here. Make sure you put this stripe up. Right now, I just snake. USB through. We're gonna hook up these connections here that we need. Make sure you use this ASUS's kit where they have this plug. I'll make it 10 times easier for you. ASUS will have this included in their kit. Not all motherboards will, but if you do, just put this on. Like right now, this, this is the reset switch, so you wanna make sure you put the reset switch in. You got the power LED. And last but not least, you got the power switch. Everything that is for the case, make sure you have them plugged in. Make sure to hook up your USB 3.2. USB-C. Extra fan connection. Now we got that all connected. All we need next is the power supply connections. Make sure to use the supplied torque screws that it comes with. Put this piece right back into the case. Next, we got to throw in this power supply. We have the ATX connection for the 24 pin ready to plug in. We have the CPU ready. The SATA power is ready too. These are just about all the cables that I need for right here. I had to grab one of these ones too. Corsair doesn't give enough power supply cables. I'm starting to become more of a fan of EVGA power supplies. And the reason why I'm gonna, this is a temporary thing, this power supply is because I do plan to replace it with a ATX 3.0 because we're gonna install a different graphics card into here and we're gonna run some tests on it with the original Corsair power supply and then with the 
ATX 3.0, which will be coming soon, hopefully. Next, we're gonna hook up the power supplies. Next, we're gonna install this graphics card. We gotta remove a couple screws to get there. So that's what we'll do. We got everything we need for our power here. All right, that's in. Next, we just gotta hook up the power connections to it. Now it's time to put this back into place. So we'll test out the PC. We finally got it all together. It's all hooked up now. And we're gonna start it up and see how it acts. Hopefully we did well. So I took a gamble and tried to use this memory that 6200 megahertz from Corsair but doesn't seem like it wants to play nice with it. So instead I'm going to try to install some of my Corsair Dominator 32 gigabytes at 5200 megahertz instead and more than likely that's going to resolve the issue. We'll give it a shot again, just replace it with the Corsair Dominators, so let's give it a shot. take a little start still hasn't shown up on the screen yet but that's okay I'm more than confident that's what it's gonna be and there it is now we're ready to set it up so currently I just have the dominators in right now so right now we're just about to get Windows set up so we'll be right back after Windows gets installed we got the PC all together now. As you see, it has finally started. I'm gonna run some different benchmarks, as you know, to see how it does compared to the Intel 12900K. There was some issues, as you saw earlier, with the memory, with the RAM. Minor issues that had to be figured out without having a new product, such as dealing with Ryzen 7000 series. There are some problematic issues that needed to be figured out first which really wasn't a big deal overall. And I will explain that more deeper in another video because this was just about really the build and not about the issues that can arise. But if you do run into the same issues that I will mention in another video, and when I do, I will have the card right above me, make sure you check that out. But as you see, the PC is finally all together. It looks beautiful, marvelous, and I can't wait to test out new generation of AMD Ryzen 7000 series. Bam bam guys, if you're interested in any of the products, make sure to check out the description box down below as I have it provided. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who loves PC and tech, especially when it comes to PC builds, make sure you share this video with them. And also make sure you don't forget to go down and hit the subscribe button for more. If you're not part of the big, wonderful fan bam already, make sure you don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure to follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and the IG as well. So fan bam guys, without further ado, I'm gonna get started on some testing. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.